Hi, and welcome back to Beans and Bezels. Helios is a name I've often heard since I got into microbrand watches, but it's also one of those brands that are difficult to keep tabs on and also sell out very quickly. Their website is a bit shabby, but they seem to be doing very well with their pre-order and waitlist system. I'm happy to finally be able to check one out, and I'd like to thank Neil for making this happen. Today we'll be looking at the Helios Fairwind, which I believe is inspired by Diver watches with a rugged overall design. This watch retails for $775 US dollars on a metal bracelet, but I believe the metal bracelets will ship separately in January 2021. Let's check it out. I measured the case to be 38.8 mm in diameter, 47.8 mm from lug to lug, 12.7 mm in height, and 10 mm if you ignore the box sapphire crystal. The case is mostly brushed, with a few polished elements and accents. Half of the mid-case extends into a pair of sharp and angular lugs, resulting in a very sleek appearance. There are sharp beveled edges that appear to be slightly more polished than the rest. Great attention to detail here with the finishing, and the lug width is 20 mm. There is a 60-click bidirectional bezel that is easy to grip and operate. It also has a sapphire insert with loomed elements, and no real backplay whatsoever, so great stuff here. The bezel seats a double-domed box sapphire crystal that adds about 2.5mm to the height of this watch, but is carefully designed such that the distortion at the edges doesn't impact legibility. Again, good attention to the details and clearly a brand that probably goes through more than one design revision. There is a signed 6.5mm screw-down crown that feels like a traditional Flieger crown, which means that it's easy to grip and operate. The crown tube extends out of the case into which the crown is screwed, which probably took more work to design and engineer. The result is a subtle improvement in how the crown operation feels. Flipping it over, you have a simple solid case back that screws down into the case. This watch is rated for up to 200 meters of water resistance. While I'm very impressed with the case design, quality and finishing, the dial doesn't fall short by any means either. This is the slate grey variant, but I also get a subtle hint of green in there too. There is a narrow outer minute track that is raised above the dial surface and positioned perfectly such the distortion from the sapphire crystal doesn't affect legibility in any way. You then have applied indices that are very generously filled with loom. The quality of finishing on these is really terrific and beyond what you typically see in microbrand watches under $1000. Really good stuff here and I also love the design of these indices. The brand's name and logo is printed under the 12 o'clock index and the watch name above the 6 o'clock index. The quality of printing is also excellent. The hands are well proportioned and combine brushed and polished surfaces. The finishing on the hands is good and pretty much what you'd expect from an $800 watch. The minute hand extends all the way to the minute track and the hour hand just about reaches the larger indices. The seconds hand is entirely polished with a, with a painted light green arrowhead tip that is also filled with loom. The finishing on the seconds hand is a little less awesome than the rest of the dial and has a corner that is missing a bit of paint. This isn't visible to the naked eye so not a deal breaker at this price. Overall, I'm sold on the dial. I love the muted color, symmetric design, great finishing, and impressive quality control. All the dial elements apart from the outer minute track are generously loomed with C3 Super Luminova. The bezel is also loomed and glows pretty bright, which isn't always the case for loomed inserts. The indices and hands are very generously filled with loom, glow bright, and hold their charge well. No complaints with the loom whatsoever, and the loom seconds hand tip is an added bonus. This watch uses a Celita SW200-1 movement without a date complication, so you don't have to worry about a ghost date position here. It's a good movement and appropriate for an $800 watch. I put this watch on my time grapher and observe roughly 0 seconds per day in the dial-up position and minus 4 seconds per day in the crown-up position. This watch wears great on my 6.25 inch wrist, and that's primarily because of the 38.8mm diameter and 47.8mm lug-to-lug -lug width. On first glance, the case pack looks like it's going to make for an unbalanced wrist experience, but the overall height is not too bad, coming in at around 12.7mm with the crystal and 10mm without. The case pack also looks this way because of how sleek the lugs are. But it's a comfortable watch on the wrist without any rocking or wobbling. I suspect that the bracelet integrates better with the lugs than a strap and will be even more comfortable. I'm very impressed with this watch. The build quality, finishing, specs and design are all a class apart from the typical $500 micro brands that I usually review. The build quality is also significantly better than my Baltic Aquascaf, which is about the same price. I'd say that the quality is closest to the Christopher Ward Dartmouth that I recently reviewed, and that's high praise because I love that watch. If you like the style of this watch and you're comfortable spending around $800 on a small micro brand, this one won't disappoint. This review put Helios back on my radar and I'll be keeping an eye on them in 2021. 
Once again, thanks for watching and don't forget to read my other reviews in the link below.